So um, Claire's going to stay on because our very next session is uh, going to um, also change the pace. So the the, um, the conversation with Nadine uh, was was very good and um, a, a little bit uh, a little bit different from from the normal presentation style. Uh, I'm going to be joined now by uh, Claire in the UK, Saul in Australia. I'm in Singapore and Alan joining us from Finland. And we are going to, uh, we, we're going to show the, the API uh, transformation uh, journey uh, through uh, a discussion and, um, and we're each going to play a part in this as, as, as has to happen in a multidisciplinary organization and APIs, you, you derive the real benefits from, from APIs when, when you tackle it in a multidisciplinary way. So I'm going to let um, uh, Claire introduce the, the topic. Uh, thank you, John, uh, and uh, delight to be here still um, at API Days. And, and hi, Saul and Alan. Um, Hello. Uh, our truly global, uh, uh, global management team. Uh, and just to give the, um, the audience a bit of an uh, introduction to, to what we're doing, we're, we're doing something a little bit different. Um, we're, we're actually going to role play uh, a, a story um, of an organization going through a process of productizing its APIs. Um, this is who each of us are. Um, and uh, I'm just going to um, uh, give you a summary first of, of what it is that we're about to do, um, which is to uh, showcase how an organization um, and a group or management team, if you like, is given a mandate to go and productize and look at some opportunities for API enablement from its existing um, kind of foray into, the, into those opportunities and, uh, uh, and share and get some and give feedback from the audience along the way into uh, the process that they go through. Um, we, we're not using any um, of our own um, uh, particular clients. There are no children or animals that have been involved in the experiment. Um, this is our own, uh, our collective experience. It's a fictional company, uh, and um, uh, we invite you as our audience to come along this journey with us. I'm going to start out by introducing the cast. Um, so, um, Saul, um, you're uh, you're our sales director. Um, for Hi, our uh, yes. As you know, I'm the sales director. I'm responsible for increased revenues, but I do that by meeting our customers' needs. And uh, they, you know, they uh, are very demanding um, and we need to push boundaries around those needs. But uh, that's my focus is on the customer. Uh, great, I'm, I'm Claire, the project manager. Um, I'm all about delivery. Uh, I've been uh, working in the organization, um, delivering complex IT projects uh, for some while and uh, um, I'm pretty experienced in, our, um, in how we've used APIs to date um, because they've been part of our integration strategy um, and, uh, yep, all about working with Saul and his colleagues. So excited and getting on and getting things done. Hi, so I'm, uh, I'm Alan. I'm playing the API product manager. I'm uh, new to the organization, so I'm, I'm just getting in with the team now. Uh, but in my previous uh, companies, two companies, uh, I had the role of API product manager and was able to make some changes there. And I'm John. I'm playing the, the enterprise architect. I'm, uh, I started with the company I'm, uh, from its uh, very foundation. I'm employee number three. I built, bought, or borrowed most of the systems that we, we use and uh, and integrated them. Like any architect, I love diagrams with, that had lots of rectangles. So I'm represented here by a rectangle. That's great. And um, uh, when I take my hat off, I'm uh, uh, in my facilitation mode. And uh, we have an opportunity up on the um, poll, uh, opportunity for the audience to uh, give us some feedback along the way. So our first question for you is, uh, uh, which of these four roles do you personally most um, relate to? Because that can give us a sense of um, you as our stakeholder community, um, who you're representing and um, what sorts of interests. And we'll be uh, um, going back and using the polls along, along the way. So 
Um, so, so you can you can see this uh, now on your screen if you go to the polls section. You're probably looking at the chat right now, but right next to the to the chat is the polls, and uh, you have um, one one poll that we've just published. Uh, which role reflects your own responsibilities? So, this this helps to identify um, who um, who you. Who you normally uh, uh, identify with in an organisation, but just remember, we're 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 all part of a multidisciplinary team. So, so um, so here we are as a group um, representing sales, product, API, product management, tech, uh, and uh, project management. Um, uh, we've been charged by our board and executive uh, team to uh, come up with uh, some strategies that are going to make technology realize a real difference for our, our customers. And it would be worth us going back and reminding ourselves of the uh, broader vision. Perhaps, Saul, you could uh, introduce for the team, um, you know, the, the mandate from the executive, remind us about uh, the key priorities for us. Um, yeah, well, we are, we are very focused on customers. We're very much a customer first organization. Um, we pride ourselves on our innovation and also uh, increasingly on our green credentials. Now, the board in the recent strategy have passed down a, a, a strategy which is really a very ambitious revenue growth targets. So they want us to double our revenues in two years. Um, we're probably not gonna be able to get that through just organic um, uh, growth of the customer base. We need to um, work more closely and uh, um, increase our average revenue per customer, basically. And we see that as possibly being through, um, achieving that through uh, deeper relationships with our customers and extending our services beyond just selling them uh, 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 products and uh, moving more into the maintenance and refurbishment cycle. So a quick question from my side, you know, on the uh, strategy highlights, we've got streamline customer ordering at the same time, we've got make maintenance easy. If, if it comes down to a priority, which one of those will we choose? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of discussion around that. So streamlining the ordering cycle is viewed as important but it's more of a, that's more of a cost optimization. So that's going to save us money, but it's not going to deepen our relationships and create more revenues. We see maintenance as creating stronger revenues and therefore that is, we regard as taking higher priority. Okay, good to know. Okay. So, um, so that's an interesting um, theme and, and so it's a bit of a change actually from some of the, uh, perhaps some of the investment priorities that we've been um, charged with. We've been doing doing uh, uh, a bit more focus around things like supply chain and stuff and, and internal things recently. So, so thank you for um, for that. Um, we've um, uh, it's also worth us reminding, being reminded of what what this group has been charged to do. So um, uh, we've been, if you like, uh, kind of handpicked from our uh, 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 the executive team. We've you know, some of us have worked a bit together before, but we haven't as a group actually had to come together and, um, uh, uh, you know, solve uh, some some really key strategic um, proper questions, if you like, for the organisation. Um, it's worth uh, also kind of understanding what we've been doing to date around our API space. Um, we, we know there's a bit of, uh, you know, uh, pressure to, to get on and deliver some of this change, but um, we've... Uh, uh, we, we've actually been doing quite a lot around APIs, I think. Um, John, uh, as uh, you and your architecture colleagues um, have been helping us get a bit of an understanding of what our current API landscape looks like, could sure. you um, share so that we're all on the same page about what this okay, means? Okay, sure. Well, this is my favourite slide in the whole deck, by the way, uh, the <laughs> slide with the, uh, the rectangles on it, because it shows mm -hmm. the, the architecture on a page. Um, we, as I, as I said, um, we, we built this uh, uh, set of systems pretty much from the ground up, right, from um, uh, the sales and order entry through 
the um, uh, CRM system, the uh, supply uh, procurement, supply chain, and, and the manufacturing system, and uh, right through to the to the accounting uh, and HR systems. Now, uh, one of the big challenges that we've had with our supply chain is we we, we produce a very unique product, and that's because uh, we uh, we we produce a very new product, and um, our, some of our suppliers are very specialised. And although um, uh, integration techniques like EDI have, have been around for, for years, many of our smaller suppliers that are, in fact, some of the most innovative ones, uh, don't have such uh, uh, mature systems. And we've had to figure out how to integrate uh, with them through lots of different means. And that's why we've got uh, the, the red numbers there you see are the number of interfaces or APIs that we've created in order to solve these, uh, this challenge of linkage uh, across the, the different systems in order to get a, um, uh, a, a consistent, a, a streamlined workflow from, uh, from order to cash. Um, I would say we still have a lot of a lot of problems with uh, with the maintenance of, of some of these interfaces. We have um, we have produced some some APIs. We created a, a developer portal, um, but um, that's still in its infancy at the moment. But John, about that dev portal. Um... Is, is that internally facing or is it also externally facing to customers and partners? Well, mostly it's been internally facing. Um, we have um, dealt with a, a few of our suppliers through private APIs. Um, but because many of these interfaces are, um, are custom bespoke, um, they're, they're not really generalized things that we've published on a, on a developer portal for, for all to see. Okay. Um, I, I'm curious, still about um, uh, what some of our customers' uh, feedback to you and experiences of, of some of their uh, uh, feedback today with the, um, the integration that they have and some of their uh, reflections on us in terms of our technology delivery and um, capabilities. Well, so I know that in, in many cases we do build these bespoke interfaces and it seems like we each customer has got their own unique requirements and we kind of build a new um, channel just for them and that that really hits our bottom line and uh, it takes a long time uh, causes delays uh, they think that we could work better mm. okay so there's um the, uh, the, so that's interesting. Um, it, um, uh, and if you look at our landscape too, you know, clearly there's quite a lot of places in there that we could go and look for opportunities for improvement. Um, perhaps it would be interesting to get our broader stakeholder community, our audience, to give us some um, ideas about which of, which of these priority areas, so the ones with the, the most number of uh, uh, APIs internally at the moment, could have the, uh, the best opportunity. Um, so we've got another poll opportunity for um, for our audience. So uh, if you want to click over uh, next to the chat um, and uh, give us some feedback on whether you think uh, sales channels, uh, supply chain opportunities, or manufacturing and service maintenance are um, would be the area that would uh, um, reap the most benefit for us uh, with potential API productization based on the summary we've given you of our strategy. Um, because that leads us on to get some help uh, where we're going to invite Alan to um, uh, share with us, I think, some techniques that have worked for him well at other organisations uh, to help us think about, um, uh, you know, we were, we were having a bit of a chat about this offline, Alan, and uh, it's, it's not something that we're, we're familiar with. We haven't done this in the company before. Um, but perhaps you could explain to us how we can start thinking about a product. There yeah, thanks, Claire. Um, as, as, I, as you mentioned there, you know, I've used this quite successfully um, in, in some of my previous companies. This is just like one canvas of a greater uh, product management uh, portfolio that you can use. Uh, and what we do here is we say, okay, um, how, how can we turn like APIs into products, right? 
And from a high level perspective, we're going to go ahead and say, um, let's create a vision for how this product could be. And this is also a good uh, technique for brainstorming to create new products out of nothing, basically. So uh, I'll lead you through it very quickly. Basically, I mean, um, it's quite clear the vision is about saying, okay, what's the purpose for creating the product, right? What, what positive change should it bring about for for your for your target group? So your target group means, okay, is it is it an existing customer base that you're addressing, or um, is it a brand new market? You know, maybe a disruptive market, uh, market that doesn't exist yet, etc. And you're really going to identify, okay, who those target users are. Um, what we're all going to do within this process as well is leave our comfort zone and actually talk to customers uh, who, who may have problems. Uh, and that comes in the need section. So um, we're going to be talking about, okay, what what are their actual problems, you know, in terms of um, working with us today? They, what do they say? Okay, uh, it, it's fantastic, but if only you would do this, um, and then what kind of benefit can we provide out of that? Uh, we're going to shape a little bit the product. Obviously, the product evolves uh, from here, but this gives a high-level uh, overview of what the product should basically do. Okay, uh, what, what are some of the key features? Um, and then, lastly, uh, you know, defining the business goals. You know, uh, so that the the product actually is aligned with the mission statement of the organization. And it's much easier to get stakeholder uh, engagement. Um, going forwards for the product if it's aligned with the business goals of the organization. So if it's to, in our case, we need to make uh, revenue. Uh, and so the, the product needs to be monetized. So yeah, how did we get on with the poll? So, so Alan, um, while we look at the poll, um, yeah. can you help me out with the, the words that you've used here? I'm familiar with motors and batteries and alternators as products that we manufacture and sell. But we're talking software here. How can software be a product? Yeah, so I think a lot of people are getting used to um, the idea of new digital products and services. So, uh, you know, the the App Store from Apple is one of the, the earliest examples of a, a marketplace for digital products. And so we're going to be selling these digital products and services alongside our existing, uh, if you like, hardware. Um, so approaching customers and uh, basically it's a way of uh, generating revenue on top of what we already earn today. I like that idea. I thought you would. <laughs> okay. What about um, John? Have you got any questions in terms of uh, um, uh, you know the technology impact on some of this? It's, uh, it's this isn't a way that we've traditionally uh, thought about scoping out work or understanding it at all. Yes, well, I mean, one of the challenges that we've had with um, with these these interfaces that we've built is that every time um, we we have to connect to a to a new customer or supplier, um, it's it's a new project. And although we've built APIs before, every new project seems to come along and say, well, that interface doesn't have all the fields that I need, so I'm going to build a new one or clone that one and add a field or, or something of that nature. So this, this problem of, um, uh, it's, it's, it's not a problem of too few APIs, but perhaps uh, too, too many that we're, we're not really promoting the, the reuse that uh, that we had envisaged when uh, when we'd uh, gone down this API path. Mm. Yeah, that's okay, well, that's maybe. definitely a, a common problem with regards to um, you know cloning of APIs. And, and what we're trying to do with the product is that we offer one uh, one interface uh, externally, and we reduce the technical debt. But uh, we can go into that in more detail in some of the next sections as well. Mm. So, is this a chance for us to um, actually? Uh, start contributing into uh, uh, the product vision board. Alan, can you uh, uh, coach us through? You know, we we want to get started sure. on this. I'm um, all about yeah. You know, let's, let's, let's do some brainstorming, right? So so we know the vision of the company, where we want to go. Uh, maybe we've got some uh, you know product ideas or, or vision. Um, if you guys can start just you know throwing down some uh, some notes on, on the board, 
and uh, we can get some ideas of uh, you know what, what kind of products we'd want to build. It's just brainstorming at this point. Great. So I see that you know we've already got one vision from Saul. Of course, you know deeper engagement with customers through predictive maintenance. I think that that that's uh, a good idea. When we we talked about okay maintenance being one of the uh, primary things that we're looking at. Um, so yeah, that that's a really good vision. Um, uh, let's see see what else we've got on the board. I think Claire, you're uh, you've zoomed in a little bit on, on vision. Yep. That's good. Helping people. Uh, yeah. Okay. We've got um, in the target group medium to large organizations. Yeah, that's that's pretty clear. We we already have a, a established base there. A segment, uh, you know, to look at supply chain. Okay, that's also an opportunity to look at supply chain. We've got some needs as well. Optimal maintenance schedules based on usage. That's also uh, you know uh, you know in this predictive maintenance kind of area that's sort of coming out here. Uh, streamlining order the cash cycle. You know, it's important to, to state here as well, you know, there's no wrong answers here. We're brainstorming, we're collecting ideas for products uh, and something might come up at this point in time that, you know, we hadn't uh, considered before. So, um, uh, yeah, I think we can we can continue this, uh, this process uh, within the workshop and then when we're done here, we'll go away and uh, see, see what we can uh, uh, see what sort of sticks out as a product that we're going to start with initially. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, so we've got a whole um, a whole bunch of uh, bunch of feedback there. Um, I, mm -hmm. I think from a um, you know from project perspective, um, I'm certainly uh, uh, keen to it. It feels like a good startup, but it doesn't feel terribly um, specific for something that we could actually go and um, you know scope up. Uh, firmly and be able to ask for a for a budget and get some committed uh, time for. So, um, so obviously, uh, I'm kind of curious, Alan, to to understand how we can convert this into something um, that will will look more like a, a project plan or something that we're we're used to seeing, in the, or at least that are that are board. But I but I think the um, the process has been been really interesting. Uh, um, yeah. Let um, uh, let's now um. Take a bit of a, uh, a fast forward. Um, so uh, um, we've uh, we've had some time offline to go and uh, validate a bit of this this feedback. And um, Alan, you're going to bring us now. Take us back to um, uh, uh, what what we what we will have come up with after having had some um, further uh, further refinement. Yeah, great. Thanks, Claire. So, uh, you know, that was a, a good week. We, we we did a lot of work. We spoke to, uh, you know, guys on the executive boards, uh, you know, our IT guys, and uh, also some customers, as we promised. We, we picked up the phone. We spoke to customers. Uh, obviously, we can't visit them anymore, but, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we we did that online. And um, we, we came up with something that really stuck out. It was it resonated a lot with the, the, the needs of the customer where, you know, we're looking at this situation that, that sometimes our equipment fails, you know, batteries suddenly drop off and die, um, which can leave the customers in difficult situations because people are becoming more and more dependent upon, uh, you know, uh, our motors and batteries, you know, that they're, they're cropping up in all, all sorts of uh, places. So the, the vision for the product is uh, effectively being able to um, turn our equipment into mini IoT devices, uh, which can broadcast their status, right? This enables our, our customers to create predictive maintenance on these. So they, they have their own AI, which says, okay, it looks like the health of uh, the equipment is, is not so good uh, and we should intervene before it leaves you stranded somewhere. So um, we're, we're gonna get replacements out to you uh, as soon as possible. So target group, as we said, you know, existing customers, medium to large segments, yeah. Um, we're not going to go any with anything disruptive here. We're going to talk to our base customers, our salespeople already talking to them. Um, uh, potentially, like new customers who are after a better digital experience. So we're hoping to grow the revenue there as well. Um, and the, the, the product itself is, as I said, uh, you know, IoT connected devices. Um, because the business goals were that we also had to generate revenue via monetization, we've gone with like a freemium model. So um, 
uh, as a customer, you can read the device status at any point in time. However, if the device is uh, struggling uh, and it's failing, it's possible that the device can send out a notification as a push from our platform. Uh, and for this, it requires a paid subscription. So um, that is that is in, uh, that's what we came up with in the last week as a high level um, product. So any questions to that from you guys? Well, I'm just concerned. We, we need all of this in six months. So um, I don't see any technical specifications yet. How are we going to get people coding uh, in time? Right. We're going to uh, adopt um, uh, an API contract first approach. Um, and, and again, we're going to follow a similar pattern where we go out and we speak to customers and see you know, does that really uh, satisfy their needs, right? Because when we have a traditional project-based approach, um, we would basically at this point start writing requirements uh, and, and fast forward and uh, in six months time, it, it would fail anyway, right? So we're going to, with the product uh, approach, we're going to incrementally make the product better until uh, we get to a point where we have a product we want to release. So Saul, I'm, um, I'm curious from a customer's perspective, um, I mean, first and foremost, do you, do you feel that this type of um, approach and solution is going to resonate with them? It's, 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 it's certainly a different offering than anything we've had in the past. Um, and you know, is there, are there some ways in which we might be able to um, you know, offer that in perhaps a bit more of a, you know, a staged way? I don't know, what, what are your, What's so, the... yeah, I've, I've been speaking to some of our customers and uh, some of them are quite concerned that based off um, a similar um, previous integration projects like our EDI, EDI project, which took, you know, months and months and months to deliver and we had to deal with each customer sequentially and it, it had carried a lot of cost and overhead. So we're, we're just worried about this thing blowing out. Um, I, I frankly, I don't see how we can scale adequately, to be honest. Have you, um, I mean, I, I guess I'm also trying to sort of, you know, think about it in terms of how we could, we could plan all of this, but I'm wondering whether we can um, focus on one or two customers or something to start with and see if that, uh, you know, if, if we could meet some of their needs without having to try and design something for everybody. Do you, do you, Well, yeah. they've all got unique requirements okay. and systems, their own unique systems, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it can be with this product approach that in the beginning, especially, you know, when we create the minimum viable version of the product that we upset some customers, uh, maybe they don't go, they're maybe not the early adopters, but we will find some customers who say, okay, you know, this solves my immediate need. Uh, and we know it's going to get better, um, so I, I'm willing to start as an early adopter on the product. So uh, the aim isn't to to go live for everybody and please everyone. We can add new features as we move forwards that you know widens the net of customers, as it were. Well, there are also some practical problems with with the implementation of some of the features because at the moment we don't uh, we don't track each individual battery that we sell. We, we, we track uh, different uh, product types. Um, we, they, they all have serial numbers on them, but we don't have a database uh, with, all the, with all the batteries that we, we sell to customers. So understanding the, the status of each and every battery and um, being able to predict when um, a, a customer should uh, bring them back for, for a service or a replacement, um, we, we don't have that um, uh, that functionality as as yet. So I, I guess I'm I, I'd like to understand the the roadmap a little bit better uh, as to you know what what are you going to build first and um, things that are going to take a longer time um, is is that acceptable to to, to customers because I, I just can't see us building everything at once even for one customer. Yeah, that, that's true. So again, we're going to adopt a contract first approach where 
um, we get the contract and we, we, we talk to uh, the IT guys as well and say, okay, look, this is ultimately solves the customer pain. Uh, and what will it take to get this done? Now, now we have um, executive buy-in over the last week on this. Um, you know, the company knows that in order to achieve its, uh, uh, its strategy, um, it needs to do this. So in terms of, you know, having work done in the back end, et cetera, which might move a little bit slower, uh, we need to get those uh, requirements in uh, as soon as possible. Um, and we will iterate from there. I mean, certainly, um, I might um, perhaps summarise the sorts of questions that we would normally um, need to be able to focus on right now. I mean, I'm, I, I'd say that, you know, from this high level scope, we can now go and take what six weeks it would usually take us probably to pull, um, pull a plan together. Um, we'll need to get some, you know, user technical requirements together. Um, uh, we certainly need to work out um, who and how we're going to get it built. Um, uh, and I know that you know our, our executive have always asked us need us to hold to what it'll cost and what it'll take. Um, so uh, that's that, that's certainly how we understand um, we get things done today um, in the organisation. Uh, um, we know that you know yeah we haven't perhaps always had the you know there've often been things that have come along that have that have, that have made it difficult and harder than we expected. Um, but that's you know that's our project risk management kind of. Uh, culture that we understand. Um, so and maybe we might um, actually get some of our stakeholders out there in our audience to to ask us to give us some feedback on what they think should be the things that we should be focusing on. Um, uh, so um, you've got another opportunity uh, in the audience to, to share the polls. We'll give you the feedback on the polls at the end. We um, uh, uh, they're not coming through to you immediately, but we'll um, uh, share them later. Um, and the questions for you. Uh, um, or, is what do you think is the most important for us to focus on at the moment? Should we be, as a team, worried about uh, time and budget for this delivery? Um, should we be making sure that we minimise any risk of, of technical debt by getting our design right up front? Um, or should we be focused on getting something into the hands of our customers um, early for their feedback? Um, and uh, uh, these are, uh, uh, so, so we're interested in what the audience would, would like to think. Um, and uh, uh, use some of those that feedback to focus on what might be the smallest step that we could could take. So um, probably invite um, uh, Saul and Saul and Alan. Like you know, we're back back here together, thinking about what we can do as uh, um, you know what what's the minimum that we can get started with. What what might that look like um, with this contract oh, well, that you've been talking to us about? So, so I, I mentioned it before as well that you know uh, the contract first approach um, is where we we basically take the the API contract and uh, approach um, approach customers and also internal stakeholders and say okay look this is ultimately uh, what we're planning to build. We also wrap a product around it as well that makes sense from a business perspective. It describes okay what what are the goals of this this product so that all stakeholders can have you know an easy to understand. Uh, think in front of them, uh, and then more. You know, the technical stakeholders will look at the contract and say, "Okay, uh, yeah, that does what I would expect it to do." We can also mock it as well, so you know, even end customers can, uh, you know, call the API and get some dummy data back, and they see the type of data that that we're we're talking of using, um, and, and the metrics that we'll look at for this are, um, you know, the the ten customers that we approach. It could be that not all of them, uh, you know, accept it and say it's perfect. But uh, we're looking to uh, get at least eight of those customers to say yes. If you build this, we we would use it. Uh, and also on the internal IT side, it starts the conversation around the uh, uh, the technical design by by saying, okay, like this is you know co-creation with customers has delivered this. This is what we need. Can you deliver? What, um, John, what do you think the, um, you and our, your colleagues in the IT community are going to be, the IT teams are going to be thinking about uh, this as a, as a starter point? How, well, how realistic is this going to be um, to do it? The, the, trouble, the trouble with uh, this approach is that there are bits, is with the bits that you leave out. Um, the things, like, uh, things like security, some of the features uh, that, um, uh, the the edge uh, cases 
And um, so I, I, I guess I have concerns about um, what, what this um, basic product will look like and, uh, and how, how robust it's going to be, uh, how it will handle errors, if we're going to have to uh, manually fix things every day because something broke. Um, because there was a, a condition that we didn't expect um, uh, occur, then we could be spending more time fixing things than, than actually building uh, new things. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm <laughs> like to understand well how how to um, how to address um, that that part. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, there's normally, for example, we, we, would, we would have a big design document that, uh, and, and yeah. uh, that we would work off. Yeah, we'd have a big design document. And uh, when it comes to actually coding and, and creating the APIs, we throw the design document out the window because it doesn't reflect, reflect reality, right? So um, rather than getting to that point later, we're going to start much earlier with, you know, contracts, we're going to start uh, developing it. Uh, get very early versions in front of uh, friendly customers who expect it to be a little bit uh, not fantastic. But then by the time we release the first product, it's going to be perfect. And instead of concentrating on, you know, 20 different uh, APIs for different customers, we're going to have just one. We can pull the resources together, have a dedicated team to make this like really an excellent product. So, so how do you have I'm, I'm thinking that if we're going to take that approach, we need to really communicate with our customers where we're heading with this. So uh, explain to them that it's going to be um, this evolutionary approach because they're going to be expecting something pretty schmick first up and I don't want our reputation uh, clouded by, by uh, missing their expectations. Do you, um, do you have a couple of customers, one or two customers in mind, Saul, who you think um, have a strong enough, uh, you know, that you have a strong enough relationship with that we could, uh, you know, that they would be prepared to get, you know, early release, uh, you know, and pro probably a larger say on the kind of broader requirements? Yes. Well, I've, I've got two, two main customers who are really interested in this predictive maintenance thing. They think that they can... Um, they can make more money out of that to their customers as well. So they're, they're kind of interested in co-investing. In, co um, and so that I think they're probably our, our anchor clients. And a couple of the smaller, more innovative customers have um, expressed interest as well. So I think we've got a small cohort of beta testers. But as I said, we really need to be very clear in setting the expectations as to how this is going to work. Mm. I think, um, I, I mean, certainly um, the concern for me is, uh, um, you know, while I, I think that the work and the conversations we've been having offline about how we could perhaps deliver this smaller piece is kind of coming together. Um, but the uh, I'm concerned that we will... Um, it's going to be hard for us to have a conversation with the executive and the board about uh, giving us almost a kind of open-ended funding envelope for this because um, if we go and we kind of have some cert well, a degree of certainty about what the first step will take, but we don't know what the, the subsequent steps are going to take. And um, are, are we asking them to kind of give us a, a, almost like a, an open checkbook um, for a period of time uh, uh, Alan, I'd be, I'd be curious to hear how how you've managed these sorts of funding questions at other organisations you've seen doing um, yeah. as these long running product based so, things. So yeah, this is this is a common problem. You know, when when a, a company is uh, giving out cash on a project basis, uh, it, it's a mentality change. You have to have executive buy in uh, with the stakeholders uh, to understand the value of the the product. Um, and, and, you know, the, the costs are, are relatively fixed. We have a dedicated team working on, on the product. Um, it stays stable every year, so they know, you know, approximately how much that's going to cost uh, to keep that team running. And, um, 
you know, the, the product has a, a life cycle as well, right? So you introduce a product, it runs, it becomes a cash cow, and then you 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 uh, uh, you leave it uh, after after a while. And um, yeah, it, it's a it's a mentality change. But at the end of the day, when you you have success and very happy customers, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I think um, I mean you know, so, um, you know, if, if you and I. Can, can tell this, you know, story convincingly to uh, um, our exec and board. Would you, you know, be able to kind of, you know, sponsor and back this as an approach? So yeah, I've I've been talking to um, some of the senior execs, and it's it's causing a bit of consternation because we've got these annual funding cycles, and this just doesn't fit that profile. So there is concern that we may be asking for a blank check. But um, there is an innovation fund that we can possibly tap into. And I think if we can provide um, some metrics around how we're going to meet the business goals, um, then the funding body is willing to hear us out on this. But yes, Claire, I will need your help in uh, testing the arms. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, um, uh, we're going to just um, fast forward um, uh, to a year and uh, talk about what the organisation has actually delivered through this uh, incremental approach. Um, and uh, life's pretty different. So um, how, how are you feeling about things, Saul, now that we, uh, we have our equipment status product out in, you know, uh, fully functional? We've done, what, three or four releases um, uh, of change? Yes, um, so I'm I'm feeling somewhat relieved. Um, it it did it did work out in the end. Um, the iterative approach with um, co co innovating with these customers, they ended up really um, valuing the process. It's it's completely deepened our relationship with those key beta customers that we had, um, and. Uh, We've, we've, we've learned a lot and it, it took us in a couple of less expected places, which I think has strengthened the offering. So it, it's demonstrated, you know, there were some wrinkles along the way. Um, we haven't really grown our revenue yet, but I think that's the next stage is when we start bringing on uh, the more mainstream customers. I'm hopeful. Oh, that, that, that's great. Um, uh, John, how are you um, f feeling about, how are you and the team feeling about the world now? Well, uh, I'm feeling a bit more positive. I'm, I'm a bit uh, sceptical that we didn't have uh, detail around uh, around the requirements at, at the start. Um, the, you know, and this sort of uh, try something and, and learn part, um, it, it was a bit on the edge for, for me and, and my team. Um, but to be honest, we didn't really have um, a good set of uh, standards and style guides for these, these APIs uh, to begin with. Um, and we found that there were, we, we learned along the way about how to build a better style guide for APIs. That, um, and and the, this new functionality didn't fit what uh, what our original ideas were, but um, but it seems to be um, but it seems to be coming together because we've we've managed to to learn a little bit faster. Um, it's still not complete. I, I think we're probably going to continue to learn um, about the best way of exposing some of this data um, and and fetching data um, between um, between our systems and. The, the batteries and motors in in the field. Um, there there are times when, uh, you know, for example, communication links aren't always available. So we don't we don't know what is happening to a to a battery for for a week or more um, until it comes back online, and then we'll suddenly get a bit of a, a dump of, of data about it. Uh, so there are some some things that we still need to to refine. But I, I guess I'm feeling better about the process. That's great. That's great. Alan, um, how's life been for you? It's been a big, big year. 
Yeah, awesome. I got a massive bonus because uh, we completed uh, within the time. So uh, I'm very happy about that. But no, seriously, we have a, a good uh, base now of customers, uh, you know, uh, early adopters who have tried it out. We found a few problems, but we were, you know, with the core team, agile team that we have now, we're able to solve problems very quickly. We have a good product backlog. We have an idea uh, of what we want to release over the next three quarters. New features have been requested by the customers, and so we're iteratively uh, making this a, a great product. And uh, you know, because we have the uh, metrics in place as well for the product to say, okay, um, we, we can uh, talk to our stakeholders on the board and say, okay, you know, this is the product, this is the benefit it provides for the customer, uh, this is the success, and, and you know, you can see that because it's within the metrics demonstrated and we can say okay what we're going to work on next so also the uh, api portal uh, you know we set that up as a marketplace uh, business uh, guys from our partners and customers can come and uh, also understand the product right it's not just for technical people they can understand and also sign up for the for the product uh, before giving it to their developers so yeah great success very happy um, and um, speaking for myself, um, it's been a, a really successful year in terms of not just delivery, but um, I feel uh, very, very converted to this uh, uh, product-based, uh, APIs first base thinking. Um, and uh, so I've been delighted to uh, um, take a bigger job helping the um, uh, executive plan some of the, um, you know, uh, 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 next phases of products um, and uh Looking forward to some product management training of my own to uh, perhaps be able to run with one of those in the future. So um, it's all been a great it's been a great year, um, and uh, thank you all very much for all the hard work. So um, we're, we're yes, at time, thank you. Um, uh, and uh, we're going to close with uh, 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 who we really are. Um, so uh, 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 as an API collective, um, Saul, myself, John, and Alan all. Uh, um, had, we've had a, a lot of fun with this. I um, hope it's been uh, interesting for the uh, for the audience. Uh, we do have, I think, two minutes, John, don't we, for any questions? Uh, yes, I can yes, we do. Been, um, uh, a little bit of feedback on the on the session. Um, so uh, we've got time for any questions. Uh, we're all available. You know, you can find any of us on LinkedIn if you need. Um, and uh, I think that's time for us to to finish up, John, as our um, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Just, just we mentioned the polls. So uh, the first question that we asked everybody was uh, which role um, reflects uh, your own responsibilities, experience um, uh, or aspirations? And I think it was, um, it was very, very interesting. A lot of people identified with, uh, with the enterprise architect. I, I guess that reflects the, the technical nature of... Uh, of the, the API community, um, a number of uh, a smaller number of people identified with a sales director or project manager, an increasing number of people, almost a third of people identified with uh, an API product manager. I guess that's probably an aspiration. It may not be in your job title now, but perhaps it should be. And uh, you should be lobbying your your boss or your your senior executives to say that you need uh, this this function. Um, the other and the second poll that we we ran was uh, which area represents the best opportunity for APIs as as products. And as Alan noted, there is no right or wrong answer to this. Uh, we illustrated uh, this um, role role play with a fictional company, um, but the um, uh, so the audience was evenly split. Perhaps a little bit more tilted towards uh, supply chain. Um, but still roughly one-third, one-third, one-third between sales channels, uh, supply chain and, and manufacturing service. And the last one, um, the last one, I think the audience is already in tune with this because um, <laughs> over 60% of, of people uh, responded that giving customers something early to get their feedback is, uh, is, is, is a top priority. So I, I think people are already in tune with this. And... Um, but this framework that Alan has shared about the product vision board perhaps um, helps people understand how they can progress uh, with, with this. 
So um, yeah. that's not to say that completing something within time and budget is not important or or getting design uh, right is, is not important, but there are different ways of, of getting there. Yeah, and, and feel free to to reach out to, to myself and I guess everybody else as well, right? Uh, especially mm -hmm. product uh, management type questions, I, I can definitely field those if you are starting out as a product manager. Definitely. Great. Well, thank you, John. We'll um, each say farewell. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you very much.